Hello everyone. How is everybody doing today? If you are here and watching, just say hello and let me know where you are from while I get everything pulled up on my end so that I can see your comments as I create. All right, it looks like it is working. Hi, Michelle and Kathy, how are you guys? All right, so today I am continuing, sorry, I'm just raising my desk up a little bit. I am continuing with the Changing Leaves Bundle and I have created card number three for you guys. So before we get started, I am Alana Wharf, Sleepless Stamper, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Manitoba, Winnipeg in Canada. I'm doing well. I am like, if you were here last week, I'm super relieved that after my dental work on Monday, I do not have a massive headache that has continued today. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> that is like the first time in many years that, um, that I have been not ended up with a headache and other side effects after. Hi, Linda. How are you? All right, so I am going to show you guys the baby wipe technique today. Has anybody ever done the baby wipe technique? Let me know if that's something you have tried or if this is brand new to you guys. So I have a whole bunch of different, um, not different, but a whole bunch of the leaves here die cut. I'm going to have to do something with these. I started off with this color palette here and I wanted a little bit more of a pop of color. So I added in some pretty peacock. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. And I also have all these others. I was stamping up a storm of these earlier. So I have some ideas in mind. This, there, I've got a few that didn't stamp very cleanly. And that is because I left the baby wipe for too long and then came back to it later. I'm working on a reel with this technique for you guys. And I tried to come back and use that later and it just was not um, wet enough. So, I think I have a trick for that. You've seen it, but you've never done it. Well, hopefully after you see this, you will give it a try. Okay, so I will review my supplies. I have a still on vacation. Oh my gosh, I heard Linda that they might have record breaking temperatures out there today. I, I can't imagine how hot it is. All right, so we have a four and a quarter by 11 card base. It's scored at five and a half. If you prefer a book fold card, you can always switch the card base to another measurement. If you are interested in earning all the supplies for this week's cards, the changing leaves, which I should have kept um, my other two samples. I will have to snag them for you. Hi, Kathy, how are you? We've got two Kathys today. Um, I should have hung on to those, so I will grab them to show you guys again. But if you'd like to earn the supplies to make all of this week's cards, a $65 purchase with this host code or by contacting me, I can put it in with my um, club order, then that will also qualify you to get all of the supplies for this week's card. So we may do this set for Stamp Club, and if my Stamp Club members um, agree that we would do changing leaves, they can also earn this week's cards and then the Stamp Club cards as well. All right, so we have the card base, and then I have two of uh, two layers that are basic white, three and three quarters by five. One is for this layer on the front, and then I stamped on the inside on another one. So that is going to go there. I have pre-die cut a pretty peacock circle. I believe this is the second largest circle from Stylish Shapes. I have a scrap of Blackberry Bliss, and then I have some basic white. You have seen the baby wipes. Linda, you have not ever done the baby wipe technique. Hopefully you will after this. Linda is a very avid stamper. All right, one second. I'm going to grab the other cards, projects one and two. I left them in the other room but it turns out I have not so one of the boys is going to help me find them so I can show them to you in the meantime we will get going with our baby wipe technique so I just keep 
for when I'm doing this technique, I have some extra stamp cases. And then that way you can take the baby wipe. So I have just taken one out of the package ahead of time. So I have this here and I try to take it out so that I don't stretch it, if that makes sense. If you've ever pulled one out of a package, you know how easily they stretch. And I have made one up already that I made for my reel. So just bear with me, I'm gonna move this aside, put this over here. So I have one already in this side, but I want to show you guys how to do this. So I will do a few drops on another one, and then I'm gonna to try to use this one. I only did this one within the last hour and a half. So if there is enough moisture in this one, I will stamp with that one and just do a few drops here to show you how to do this. So I just fold this over and try to keep it flat. I feel like you need more than one layer so that it actually can hold that um, re-anchor. I'm going to spritz it. It feels kind of dry. So I am going to spritz it just a little bit. I'm gonna move my card out of the way. You can see I didn't move it out of the way earlier and I got Blackberry Bliss splatter on it. And this is out of water already. So if I have to spritz this side, then we're gonna to have to do that. All right, so I have used Blackberry Bliss, excuse my hands, they're covered in re-anchor, Pretty Peacock, Moody Mauve, and wild wheat so if you are not a wild wheat lover hopefully in little bits with a pop of color you will like it for this project i always get the hi elizabeth how are you and christine i always buy the re-inkers when i buy an ink pad because i like them to be from they recommend to get them at the same time so that you have them from the closest dye lot as possible and there are so many fun re-anchor techniques that you can do that I don't want to be without the matching re-anchor. So this is Blackberry Bliss. For some reason, this one is super hard to squeeze. So we're just going to create a little palette. This is not going to be as large as what I need for the full leaf, but I just want to give you guys an idea. So I did three Blackberry Bliss, then I'll come in with my pretty peacock. And it doesn't really matter what order you do this in. You love wild wheat, awesome. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those people love it or hate it. And I try to put one drop of each color in each grouping and Moody Mauve really wants to drop out of there. Almost every time I get just about two drops. And then wild wheat. So I would just continue with this method um, see, look at that. That one dripped out a lot easier too. They are going to expand and kind of bleed into each other. So I would just continue with that method, just dropping kind of all over the baby wipe until it's mostly full. There will be some little gaps. And then like this one here, they will fill into each other. So I'm going to just give this a try. I'm going to, because this was done within the last hour and a half or so, I'm going to try to stamp it as it is. Otherwise, I may have to spritz this a little bit with water. So you can, to a certain extent, you can spritz it and re-moisten it, but I'm gonna show you, when I did that earlier, this one, I hadn't spritzed it enough. So it was, a, it was missing a little bit of the pattern. And then as I added more water to re-moisten the pad, which was this one here that I did the very first time, then it started to get a little murky. So you can see the difference between where the colors are still bold and then as they start to muddy into each other, if that makes sense. So you can, to a certain extent, you can re-moisten your baby wipe and then you just hit a point where it just starts to look like this, which I think this is pretty too. I will still use this. It's just not the bold color differentiation that I wanted to show you guys tonight. So we're gonna give this a try and we're gonna see if this is still moist enough. I'm not sure. It doesn't look super moist. We'll see. Well, maybe it'll be okay. And then I'm gonna give myself room enough to die cut my image. You might get a little camera shake. You did do baby wipes a long time ago. There we go. So this one worked, so that was about an hour and a half ago. So, 
I will have to make sure that I do up, whoopsie, and then I try to keep the fold the same because you can see here that that goes right through. So I'm gonna try to keep that, the folds the same. Now I'll move this aside, we don't need that anymore. But don't you love how that turns out? Bring that closer so you guys can see. It's just nice and bold and multicolored and I love the pop of Pretty Peacock in there. All right, so now the part that I told you guys yesterday that I hoped to do throughout the week so that I could teach you how to stamp and then also line that up in your embossing folder. Oh, thanks everybody. Okay, so I have the matching embossing folder. I forgot to show you guys the bundle at the beginning. And then we have our dies. So we have um, this die that coordinates with the folder that creates the hybrid set. And then we also have these ones here. So really I have only used this die on today's project. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this here, we line it up in the side, or this is the way I like to do it, on the side that has the Stampin' Up! logo, and you can kind of feel when it is in place. When it's in place, there we go, you can try to slide it and it pretty much stays locked in there. So if anyone has a better method of this, I need to trim some off the bottom of my piece of paper. It's not gonna fit in there. Um, please do share. I don't mind you guys sharing tips and tricks with me. I think it's, um, I love it when you guys feel comfortable to do that. So if you have any tips on how to do this, I'm happy to hear them. Now, I am going to take this and look through my folder and then I can line this up. So this is the part I'm saying, or any part, but if this part in particular, if you have any tricks on how to line this up, please do share them with me. Now for extra good measure, I'm just going to tape this in place. I don't always do this, but I am going to. So we have that all lined up. Now I'll just take some post-it tape and tape my piece of cardstock in place so that this doesn't slide anywhere on me. Um, no, they're the ones, the Blackberry Bliss ones. It looks like this. Sorry, my son's in here just trying to find the cards for me that look like that. Has that background? I thought I had them out there getting pictures of them. Okay, so this is all lined up. Now I need to bring in the stamp cut and emboss machine and I need just the base platform. Excuse me for a second. And the platform number four, which is this thick gray one. When you are doing 3D folders, you only need the platform and this die. Otherwise, it is not going to fit through there. Now, I just, this moved a little bit, so I wanna make sure that I am still, by me setting that down, it moved a little bit, and I don't want that to be crooked. I want it to be all lined up. And you can kind of tell the texture on the folder is going to line up with the texture. Can you guys see that in the image? So you want that all lined up and I just need to shuffle it a little. It will also line up down the stem. It's amazing how they have this so coordinated. Now I'm gonna stick that down, tuck this in here, and then we're gonna run this through. There we go. Yeah, this is them, thanks. All right, they found the cards for me. <laughs> 29 there. Oh, that's so, Denise, you are where I am. It is pretty hot here today too. I did my deadheading in spurts today. I did not do it all at once. <laughs> I love going out there and taking care of my flowers, but Sometimes when it's super hot, I don't uh, love that so much. So I actually went and did some just before I went live. All right, so here we go. Now we have this textured stamped image and I just love that now. There we go. Okay, so we can stamp our greeting. There's not a lot of stamping today. So I have the, I'm using a different stamp today. The other day I used, I'll show you the cards from yesterday, which we did two. 
because we were playing a little bit of catch up. Yesterday we did a little note to brighten your day with this watercolor background. And then I used the leftover ink that was on my block from doing this background. So you can see the two different versions. This was the one I made ahead of time and this was the one I created live. And then we decided kind of on the fly to switch this matte layer to Blackberry Bliss. I also colored the ribbon that is the thick vanilla ribbon, satin ribbon in the online exclusives. I colored that with Blackberry Bliss. And then this one, the leftover ink that was on the block from doing this one, I created this card with. So we've got those two there as well. So on both of these, I used a little note to brighten your day. And today I switched it up and went with this other greeting in the set, the you are amazing in every single way. I didn't use the dies today. And then I'll quickly show you, I had shared a reel a few weeks ago that was showing you how to do the bubble stamping technique. And I had then used that technique with my team on our team meeting last week and showed them how to use it and then made this card with them. So I just shared that card yesterday as well. All right, so let's keep going. We have a strip of Blackberry Bliss. I'm going to trim it down, but this one is roughly about a half inch by five or something like that. Now I have my embossing buddy and I always like to use my embossing buddy. If you do not have the embossing additions toolkit, it's either in the catalog or the online exclusives, but it is still available. It is very useful. Okay, so we're gonna ink up You Are Amazing in every single way with Versamark. And then we're gonna stamp that. I wanna make sure I have enough room on either side of my greeting. There we go. And then I'm going to heat set this with white powder. All right, oopsie. I've got just a few little flicks that I need to, whoops, I have a fan going in here. Did you see how that just blew the powder? We don't want that. I do have um, a little paintbrush here that I'm going to just use on there. One thing you can do too, if you don't have a fine little paintbrush, if you can create a fine enough tip on your um, take your pick tool, I have used that to lift embossing powder off before. Now, where is my very fine little paintbrush? I just had it. Well, I'll use a different one, but I have one that has a very fine tip. And Lennon and I were just talking about it. I was using all of my um, tools to, now I probably shouldn't recommend doing this, but I, Lennon is, for if, if you're new here, that's my 17 year old. There was something in the charging port of his phone and I used my tweezers <laughs> to get it out, but we tried this little fine paintbrush fit in there just perfectly. So we got some stuff out with that and then we managed to get the other piece out, but don't do that at home. <laughs> Hi Susan. Okay, so now we're just gonna heat set this. It'll take a little bit because the heat gun has been off. There we go. So you can see once it's heated up and it is melting that powder, the powder is like tiny, tiny little beads of plastic. So this is actually melting them. I have, it was, should have arrived today, but the new WOW embossing powders are available. I don't know how I missed that, but I missed that until I think the artisans were talking about it. And so they are in my order that was supposed to arrive today, but it's held up in customs. So I don't have my order, but I'm excited to give them a try. All right, so now I need to trim this down and I will tell you guys how wide this is. All right, have any of you guys tried the embossing, the wow powders? So this is three and three eighths wide. So let's just see if I flip this over and go to three and three eighths. Does it look centered? It is not quite centered. So I'm gonna go to three and a half. That's on, that makes my greeting fairly centered. 
and then I will trim the ends down after I trim it to a skinnier height. Okay, so if you have ever watched, this is a common way that I will trim my greetings down is I will stamp them first and then trim them nice and skinny. That looks pretty straight. So now I'll just flip that over and hopefully it looks straight once I trim this top side down. There we go. Now I will trim the ends a little more so that it is down to three and three eighths. All right, so I feel like if I go just a little bit there and then I can flip this. Well, that looks pretty centered. So we're gonna just keep that just like it is. I'm not gonna bother to take any more off of there. Leave well enough alone. I don't learn that lesson often enough. It's like, oh no, just a little bit more, right? Do you guys do that in your crafting? So now we have our greeting and I also have all of the front layers, but I showed you guys that this has some stamping on the inside. So I want to bring back in my little makeshift ink pad and I also have this stamp ready to go. So I'm going to use, I should have my chamois right here. I want to just clean this off first because if there's traces of ink on here still, I don't want them to make this any muddier than it might already be just by the colors, like you don't wanna tap this all around your ink pad. You wanna kind of stay in a consistent spot because if you just like ink it all up like this, you are gonna pick up color, you're gonna deposit it somewhere else and it's gonna make these colors muddy and you don't want that, unless that's the look you're going for. Okay, so I am going to ink up the whole thing first and I wanna try to get some Blackberry Bliss and I can see that there's some right in here. So I'm going to ink that up. Oh, sorry, I knocked the camera stand. There we go. So I'm going to just stamp this right over the corner. Okay, so we've got that. And then I'm going to clean this off. I wanna clean that off again. So this is the one of the tricks with this is you don't want to take that and put it back on your ink pad in a different spot because the colors will mix and then you get that muddy look. But I do want a little bit more. So now I'm going to pick up some ink with this top part here and I wanna get some that has some of that yellow. So I'm just gonna come right in here and angle that in there. There we go. That would have been pretty. <laughs> All right, so now I just wanna clean this up. I don't want that to come off of my project, especially considering it's white, the card layers. So we're just gonna wipe that up. There we go. And now we can put this aside again. I am going to just put this one back in the Ziploc bag. I don't want to close this up with these touching each other, but I do want to close this up. I have a fan going in here and I don't want to dry that up. I want to be able to use that a little bit more once I'm done my live. So by closing it up, hopefully it will help keep that wipe as moist as possible. So now I can clean this stamp off again and then it will be ready to go again for next time. All right, so now we can bring all of these things back in and bring the card back in. Here we are, and we can get ready to assemble. I feel like I should stamp something on the inside on that layer though too, so let's just see. You are amazing in every single way. I couldn't have done it without you. Do you think, or we could do thank you on the inside? If I did a little thank you right there, what do you guys think of that? I feel like we should add a little something on the inside, so let's do that. I'll get a block. And a trick for you with your stamps. I find that if you put your stamp, just let it kind of fall naturally so that you're not manipulating it. Just let it go down face down on your surface and then pick it up. I like to try to put it straight on the grid 
and then pick it up with the block straight. And then hopefully my greeting or whatever stamp will be straight. So now I'm gonna bring in some pretty peacock and stamp this on there. There we go. Now the inside feels more complete. Usually that's the greeting I would put on the front, but I don't mind that on the inside. So now we have the inside ready to go. Make sure that I have my card fold going the right way. We're gonna let that just dry for a second. Now I have distressed the edges just slightly of this layer here. I will often do that, especially if I have very basic layers. I'll just give one layer a little bit of extra detail or dimension. I'm not doing this very hard. It's just a very gentle bit of dimension there. And then I have my dimensionals, just grabbing them from my pile of adhesives here. Now we can get this ready when backing peeled off before I was ready. So we'll get this ready. I'm going to use some of these border ones. There we go. So if you're just hopping on, this was the baby wipe technique. I would love to know if you have given it a try. I know Linda said she did this a long time ago. We've I've done this many different times and often with the leaf stamp set, but we have used other ones too. Now I have this circle that I'm going to dimensional on here as well. So again, I'm gonna snip some of these ones here. I'm trying to think of what other ones we've done this with. There have been some, oh, the tie-dye background one. I did the baby wipe technique with that. Do any of you remember, oh, I can't remember. It was like some Baroque type of image. It was a background sized block but the image wasn't quite background sized. It was kind of like a medallion sort of thing. And actually the medallion background stamp, I think we did it with that one. Um, gosh, there's so many, maybe even that camouflaged one with um, greens and browns. There are so many types of images that look good with a baby wipe technique. So I just dimensional down that little circle. Now I'm going to dimensional the leaf so I have a few border pieces that I'm going to finish up here. Don't you love it when you finish off a sheet of dimensionals? I'm actually gonna snip this one in half. It is very satisfying, I find, when I use up the rest of a sheet. I'm just gonna tuck this little bit on the stem. I didn't do that on the other ones, but that piece was sitting there, so I may as well. Oh, that backing doesn't want to come off. Hi, Sally. Okay, so we've got those. Now I can snip some others in half. Gonna need a few more than that. I'll snip this one in half too. That's just like the piece I just used. So I tried to put one at the base of each leaf or like a half a dimensional at the base of each leaf and then one closer to the outside. Now, yesterday's card, I put them kind of right at the edge of the petals. I can't do that today because they overlap a little bit. So I'm kind of coming to about two thirds of the way out from the center of the petal. And then that way, they hopefully will not stick over, the dimensionals will not stick over the edge. So do you have, if you're watching, do you have this bundle yet? Or if you're catching the replay, when you, whenever you watch this, let me know, do you have this bundle yet? I know some people, I've received some messages that people were on the fence and some of the projects I've shared have encouraged them to purchase it. I love leaf stamp sets. I don't know what I was thinking when I thought, oh, I'm just peeling the backings here, by the way. I don't know what I was thinking when I thought, oh, you know what, maybe I will not get this one because I always get the leaf sets. And that's because I love them, so I should just know better. So now this one is gonna angle like that. And then I have my greeting here. Now I contemplated 
a lot back and forth. Do I go to one side? Do I go to the other side? Do I go in the middle? And I settled on the middle. Now this one, I put a little bit higher that leaf, but that's okay. Now I have my mini dimensionals and I must have put them back in the drawer in between. Sometimes I clean up in between and sometimes I don't. All right, so we're gonna double decker the outside edges. So you put one on, you peel the backing, and then you stick the other one on. And then the other side here, I'm going to do the same thing. You put one on, take the backing off, and then you put the other one on. It is key to take the backing off in between. You do not have it, but now you want it. Oh, Elizabeth, was this one up? Were you one of the ones in the group that got this for the artisan assignment? I can never remember who. I'm just always in awe of what you guys create. Um, so the key when you're doing a double decker is to make sure you lift the backings off in between. Um, my sons are super helpful and so is my husband. One of them was helping me with putting dimensionals on elements of a swap one time. And so he lovingly double deckered every piece he needed to, but he didn't peel the backings in between. So then they kind of separate from each other, right? So just make sure you do that. It's all good. We learn from doing those things, right? Okay, so this is just gonna go right on here. Hopefully I'm putting that down straight. Hard to see when I can't look straight above my project. So we have that. And then I also have some linen thread. So I'm going, going to just tie a bow. Got more backings there. There we go. And I usually tell you guys this, but I like to always repeat it just in case somebody new is watching. When I tie a bow, and you can see here my loops are not the same size, I like to hold the knot and the base of the loops flat between my fingers and then cinch. And that will help keep your loops from twisting on you. So it's a little bit sad when you get the perfectly tied bow and then you cinch it back and it twists and then you've got to redo it. It was an assignment, awesome. I have to go back and check them. Okay, or maybe they haven't posted yet. Maybe I should be quiet. <laughs> We've been featuring online exclusives, so with the new release. Alrighty. So this I'm just putting on a glue dot now it's a little bit large so i'm just going to fold it on itself behind the bow now i'm going to just tuck that little tail in there because this is only attached on the ends i can just tuck this in there there we go and now i can hold those two tails slide this up i'm holding it up against that little greeting label and now I can kind of tack that down right there. So now our bow is attached. I will probably trim those tails down just a little bit. And before I put the gems on the front, we will put the inside on the card. I did not distress the inside, but I think I'm going to on this one, just so it doesn't look quite so flat. That one's looking like it needs a little bit of love. So we're gonna just distress this just a little bit. This will also tie it into the front so that it looks intentional. And I'm going to attach this with my stamp and seal plus. If you are brand new here, I don't love attaching basic white layers that are so smooth with my Tombow. Even when I go really gentle, I end up with a pointy little outline where I've placed the Tombow. So I prefer to use stamp and seal when, now that's the only catch is if it attaches before you're ready. So I try to just get my fingers in between there, line it up and there we go. So there we are, that is the inside. And this again is gonna be different every time. You're probably never gonna get that stamp right down in exactly the same spot. And as you go, the colors will dull because you're using them up. Now for the gems, on yesterday's card, I used the, now I've set them down and there they are right in front of my face. 
So yesterday's card, I used these same gems. These are the Adhesive Backed Pearl Trio. I believe they are from Thoughtful Wishes, Thoughtful Journey Suite. And I loved how those ones coordinated. So today I decided to use the other color. I've got to figure out something that I want to use this color on. But sometimes we just don't love every color of gem. I want to create a scrapbook page with this bundle. I don't know that it would necessarily be my live demo because that may not be what people want to earn as their project for the week, but I would still like to make one. So there we go. I used, I think that's pretty peacock. Maybe it's Lost Lagoon, but I think it ties in. <laughs> Sorry, I have the hiccups again. I think that's like every day for the last probably four or five times I've been either on a class or a live where I've gotten the hiccups at some point in my session <laughs> if you were here yesterday i'm pretty sure i had them yesterday didn't i all right so there we are there is today's card i hope you guys like it i hope you will give something a try from this project whether it's the baby wipe stamping whether it is the layout or just using the bundle i hope you're inspired to go ahead and create I forgot to mention at the beginning that we do have bonus days going on right now. So in Canada, if you spend $60, then you are going to earn $60 that you can redeem. So this is in July. If between July 3rd and 31st, you make a purchase of $60 Canadian or more, you will earn a $6 bonus coupon. Thank you, Denise and Linda and Christine. That's so nice of you guys. Um, you will earn a $6 coupon that you can redeem in August. So if you want to earn all of the supplies to make these cards, a $65 purchase will earn you the supplies to create the cards. So again, we have cards number one and two. I have a thing for trying to make them sort of coordinate. I can't promise the whole week will, but um, yeah, bonus days are awesome, Linda. And so I often end up having them coordinate by the end of the week. So we'll see what the next two days brings us. But um, so far, these are the three cards. I would prep all the supplies for you. I can't do the stamping for you, but I will give you all of the die cut embellish or die cut elements, the embellishments and all that kind of stuff. So your $65 purchase in Canada will earn you the kits for, yeah, the five kits for this week. And that will also subsequently earn you a bonus days coupon that you can redeem in August. So you can let me know if you would like to purchase this week. It goes until Sunday to earn the Changing Leaves set of card supplies. And the bonus days runs all month. So we'll have a new bundle next week. And then... Um, yeah, you can use that or you can online or you can contact me to get in on that. And I think that is probably everything. I will have some upcoming events that I really need to let you guys know about very soon. Um, so hopefully I can get on that before the week is over and let you guys know about some upcoming events that I am going to have. There are so many beautiful new bundles. And again, I will update you guys as well if my stamp club decides that, I usually give them a, like a yes or no option. I don't just normally say this is what we're using. But um, we were going to use Spotlight on Nature, but it is not available. The stamp set isn't, so that's pretty hard for them to stamp along with me if they can't get the stamp set. The dies we can work around, but the stamps are pretty hard to work around. So um, I have proposed that we use the Changing Leaves bundle. So, and people can jump in on Stamp Club as a one-off if you want to do that. You don't necessarily have to be committed to the whole time. You wouldn't get all of the benefits that the Stamp Club people do get, but you can join in as well. So if that may interest you, I can keep you guys posted on whether or not my stamp club settles on using changing leaves and then they can also earn this week's cards as well. All right, thank you Louise. Yes, I'll post the replay right away and then once Ryan is home, he usually helps me with getting everything loaded on YouTube and I have to quickly take the pictures of today's cards first. 
So once he is home, he'll help me get it posted to YouTube. But in the meantime, it will be on, hi Oren, how are you? It will be on um, Facebook for the replay. So you can go back and see how to do this. And yesterday's for these two cards are there on Facebook and YouTube already as well. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys being here. I look forward to bringing more projects with this bundle to you tomorrow. It will likely be evening that I will do that for you guys. The daytimes have just been a little bit hectic, but um, likely be the evening. So I will post and let you guys know. Thanks again very much, everybody. I hope you all have a good night.